about something exotic, beautiful, wild and different. If you are interested to know a little bit more about this type of orchid, that's pretty affordable, different from most of the phalaenopsis that you see around in supermarkets and garden centers, come with me. This here is called Brassia or Bratonia Shiloptokin. It's one hybrid, but as you can see, it produces many flower spikes and it's a beautiful, gorgeous plant. I want to make this video and talk to you a little bit more about these types of plants, how you can grow them at your home, how you take care of them, and I decided to talk about this plant specifically because I think it's a great plant that you can have as a first orchid or if you have phalaenopsis and you want to try something new because brassias in general especially the, the hybrids they are pretty affordable and you can find them in different places at least in my area of the world but I do believe from my research and the things that I've seen before they are available and affordable in other parts as well Something very interesting about this plant, and that's why I told you since the beginning that it's, I think it's very wild, is because it has, the flowers has a spidery shape, as you can see here, and they are pretty large compared to many orchids. Another thing very interesting about this plant, that it produces many inflorescences, and the inflorescence has many, many blooms. So, you would have a wild, beautiful different plant that has so many blooms and on top of that it's a pretty easy to care for plant i will talk to you now a little bit about where brassias come from how you can look after them so basically some general care for you to bloom your plant and i will also tell you a little bit about my experience with this plant hello as you can see these plants grow in florida and Mexico, and one little town more. They also go in the Caribbean, they also go, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they also grow in the Caribbean, Brazil, Colombia. So they are originated from South America. There are around 30 species, different species of Brassia. This one, as I said, is a man-made hybrid. They are tropical plants and that it says a lot about its care. A few things about these plants. Thank you, Iris, for helping me out here. So, as I was saying before, they are from top, tropical countries. They love their humidity and uh, warm environment. But they can grow nicely at home because they are not very fuzzy about their own requirement. They are epiphyte plants. So they grow on top of tree, branch, on top of moss. You don't pot your plants on heavy soil and packed soil. That's the first thing. The second thing is, these are called sympodial orchids, which means they are different from phalaenopsis, vandas, that they grow one leaf after the other one. These plants, they grow pseudobulbs. I have here one new growth will produce and fully mature one pseudobulb. This pseudobulb will produce a new growth that will again produce another pseudobulbs. The pseudobulbs, they store water, which is very important to keep the plant hydrated. And each new pseudobulb can produce one flower spike or even two. Each pseudobulb, in this case, in this plant, produces one flower spike. But I have a beautiful show, a beautiful display. And how I got it? Since I know basic requirement for Uncision and intergenerics, and I live in London, I do have cool, cold temperature outside, but inside my home, it's always all, all over, all year around, I have around intermediate temperature inside my home, which is really good for this plant. It grew vegetatively like nothing. One thing for you to bear in mind about this plant, it's a big plant, so usually brassias, they are not small. They tend to become very, very large plants. This one is one of them. I have divided it already and look at the size. It was growing super nicely below my growing lights, but for two years it didn't bloom. It was growing and growing non-stop, but it didn't bloom. Which made me think, I'm giving this plant water, I'm giving this plant some light, fertilizer, it's growing super nicely, but not blooming. I realized that after more than two years that the lighting that I was offering, it wasn't enough. This year, I placed it behind me. This window here has a southern or eastern exposure, 
which is pretty highlight where I live when it's spring and summer. With the highlight, immediately the plant starts spiking, as you can see. So that's how I achieved this multiple flower spike situation. I need to increase the lighting that I was offering to my plant. Again, brassias in general, they, are, they come from tropical countries, they need highlight. It's not like cattleyas that you can offer highlights and vandas all year round. If you notice that the leaves are becoming yellowish or losing its uh, green color, it means you're offering too much light. But when your plant's growing nicely and it's not blooming, the first thing that it would access is the lighting situation. So in this case, it was the lighting. Now it's blooming super nice. So a few tips if you are growing, if you buy one of these plants is, remember that they are tropical plants. They need intermediate temperature inside your home all year round. They are not really picky with humidity. Some oncidiums and intergenerics, they need a lot of water. And if you don't offer them water on time, they will become pretty sad, I would say. The plant will dehydrate it very quickly. Brassias, especially the hybrids, they tolerate days without watering much better than most of the intergenerics that I have at home. These plants need to be watered when the medium is dry. So what I do is I stick my fingers here and I check if the medium is dry. Otherwise, I also check on the pot to see if there is some water left on the bottom or some, some sort of humidity around the root system. So that's when I know when this plant needs to be watered. They are pretty tough plants which is very good for people that are beginner. So if you're a beginner, if you want an orchid that's easy to grow, <laughs> it's pretty tough and will grow fast and will bloom for you maybe multiple times a year, I would advise you to try a Brassia Brass hybrid, especially if you like wild and exotic type of flowers. It doesn't need any dropping temperature to bloom. It will bloom when one pseudo bulb is completely mature. Again, when I'm talking about tropical plants, usually you have some differentiation with rain all on, around the, the year, but we don't have difference in temperature, like not exactly huge difference in temperature, especially when we are not talking about high altitude. When I'm talking about low altitude. So, as I'm saying, they're not picky with humidity, but you can't leave them outside if you live in a very cold country, or you can't leave them exposure to bright, direct light if you live in a very hot country. And even in countries that are not very hot, you have to be careful with sunlight because it can burn the leaves. That's just a few things for you to, to bear in mind, but they are great to grow inside our homes all year round. You don't need to offer them high humidity. Most of the orchids, they love humidity, but if you don't, have, if you live in a place that is pretty dry, they will do probably great. You won't, you will have to water them a little bit more. I have mine potted in bark and moss, which work greatly. I don't have any problem, any issues, root rot or any, any sort of thing with that. I can even offer a little bit more of bark in my potting medium, more than I offer to my Miltoniopsis, Miltonias, and other intergenerics because each can keep up without watering for longer than the other plants. And uh, the last thing is lighting. Again, if you live in a, in a country that's cold, like where I live, you definitely need to offer it some artificial lighting, but has to be one that's proper for growing plants, I would say, or you should keep it near your windowsill where you have bright light because these plants, they need their bright light. If you do it, I don't see any way for you not to be successful with these plants, because I was mentioning before, I think they are great for beginners. They grow quickly. Their blooms last for at least a month, in my own experience, and that they are affordable. You can find them locally. I found this one in a local garden center, and that they are not expensive orchids. I think here in the UK, you can find them between 15, 20 pounds, that's the average price for these sorts of plant, which I don't think is expensive compared to most of the orchids, especially comparing with the size, that's a very large orchid. Also, it grows super fast. If at some point some friends want a division, you can divide it and give to your friends and that they will have brassias in their homes as well. And to wrap up this video, that's some general care information about growing brassias. I want to say that, I don't know if you're afraid of spiders, <laughs> but even if you are, 
I think these plants, they are so wild and exotic. If you look at the lip here, it's full of dots and this one has a purple lip because as again, this is a hybrid between Miltonia and Brassias. So it has, I think, 25% of Miltonia and 75% of Brassia. Brassias, usually they are more like brownish and yellowish, but the hybrids can have some other colors. In this case, I have a purple lip. I super recommend this, this plant, especially if you don't have many orchids, even if you have many orchids. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, it helps me a lot. And yeah, and let me know which type of content you are interested in. And let me know if you have brasses at home, if you are successful with them, which type of orchid you love or you want to know a little bit more. Iris, you want to say something? Hello and please support my mom. And what else? See you next time? See you next time. Okay, bye-bye! <laughs> Te amo. Oi.